It is March the 19th, 2018. Hi, everybody. I'm Dana Dernford, your host. Your host, Dana Dernford, a nuclear proctologist out over. There's a gallows laugh. It's very difficult to get these streams up and running. That's why I don't hide away from anybody. I do I give you video, I give you pictures with my name on it. So that should, like, you should give me a few moments of your time. Just on that mirror alone. And I'll introduce you to the bizarre world of nuclear. No matter who you are on the planet, you can learn this too. I'll turn it down in the background a little bit, my mistake. So the, so the isotopes we're going to talk about are not made by the planets or the sun and the solar system. They're unique to Earth. And when they're in your body, they're pulsing. Every second for the rest of your life, your body attacks with white blood cells that displaces your red blood cells that carries nutrition and oxygen throughout your body permanently. It's not like the flu where your red blood cells comes back up a week later. The isotopes are electrically charged so they bind themselves with your DNA, with your chromosome, and sequester in your muscles, your organs, and your bones where they maintain that spot for infinity. And that if you die in the future and you're cremated, you'll liberate the isotopes into the environment and they'll just pulse. They are global warming on steroids all by themselves. The industry has spent a lot of time and energy to manipulate you so you don't question. And if you question the industry, they come for you. I don't know why it looks that color, but it does. When you consider give me a hard time here today. They celebrated my removal from YouTube, my ability to live stream. I had to start up another account, a backup account, just in case, and it happens, and so we activated it, the nuclearproctologist.org. They burn me every day, but all I do is tell the truth and educate people. And so I'm not going anywhere. I'm not the bad guy, okay? And, uh, having a hard time with my background today for some reason. That's enough in that case. Let's keep rolling. Now, the University of California is missing, like me, missing. What are you two, Dana? The University of California has other attributes that have got my attention, where they're missing mathematical equations, and I'm worried because they're producing all these students, and the students are going out into the world without the rest of the mathematics. And so, therefore, the, the academics there, because there's no checks and balances, right? They're not really a university. They're a think tank for a corporate personhood uh, movement, which will strip the planet of its resources and its oxygen and everything else at some point. Now, an activist is, is feared and loathed but as his cause succeeds, it costs little to join. And then the movement gets some traction. And that's how it generally plays out. And I'm not saying the people that are late in the show are, are not passionate or something. I'm just saying they weren't aware. And then when he became aware, because somebody had to take the beatings to tell the story. Well, there was an activist recently, I'll give you a prime example. An activist in Thailand said he's worried about the fish from Fukushima. And my reaction, of course, was rightly so. An uh, activist says no to nuclear. 
You, you can't say that, man. Can he say that? You can't say no to nuclear. Man, oh, man, oh, man. What's next, I wonder? Oh, catch the show tonight. We, we shake our head in disbelief. What the frig is going to your mind? Right. Like, you can't criticize nuclear. Like, let's get freaking real here. You, you don't criticize. You can criticize anything you want, but you don't criticize nuclear. Now, we're going to head back out on the ocean on the expeditions. And we're going to go ahead and repeat the experiment where we're going to do species counts. Crime of the century, by the way. We're going to go ahead and do species counts, or an even bigger crime that is using a camera. That, that's the crime of the century. So I'm going to up the crime to a big crime by using a big camera. Is that how this works? <laughs> So for a couple of minutes, we got um, some updates because we're leaving in uh, 11 days or so, 10 days for, who knows, six, seven months. We might never come back. We're going throughout the coastline. I put up an official press release on my website, The Nuclear Proctologist, under headlines for... The nuclear proctologist, the uh, lead story you'll see is the expeditions announcement of the expedition. So we're going to go up and we're going to redo species counts, which is, of course, the crime of the century. And we're going to update you with some videos. Now, because I'll be going in all of these communities, one of the smartest things I've ever done was got this thing. And this can do about 20 kilometers range. So I can get into all the communities without waiting for taxis and buying taxis. And, and and this is just, this is the big camera. We got bad colors. I didn't fix the colors. We got the board, but I, I need a better computer to run the board. Start the engine up and lean forward. You can't. Yeah, where that last video ended on the big camera. Hang on. I'm getting ready to start. And then you see the camera behind me? Well, then that's this video here. Start the engine up and lean forward. You can't. There's a cold start on the engine yesterday. It's like nine degrees outside. That's the wood rattle in your hair and do it. That's good. Sounds good. Because we're going to head up. Don't mind the rattle. That's the wood there. I usually got a bungee cord so it doesn't do that. So I'm getting ready to... I went out yesterday and flew the big spinnaker. I have two of them. And what I'm trying to do is get good enough that I can leave it hung like this. Got to get the kinks out of it, obviously. I'm going to shoot ahead through. It's only a little tiny bit. Let me go back here. And so... We're going to head up to the species count for six, seven months, I would imagine. And so the sailboat don't cost much at this stage to do anything. It's all ready to go. We have underwater remote control vehicles. Thanks to Katie for that, by the way. And we have... And I can't really name everybody all the time, but sometimes it's on top of my head and I name people. So we got the spinnaker up. Yesterday I went out and intentionally, intentionally wrapped it around the halyard, around the jib. I have a self furling jib on the front, right? So I wrapped it around that intentionally and then took my time and untangled it because we had good conditions to get away with something like that. So I've done it twice. I went into the wind, let it wrap around it naturally, then walked up and held on to it and worked it out and kept an eye on it. 
<laughs> well, we got the beak one up. I'm gonna get off course here. Don't pay attention. We got the beak one up. Hopefully, we got it on high quality. No. It was looking oh, like it was on high quality. You were just quality. watching it on the other camera. That's pretty awesome. So I deliberately wanted to put it up a little off center, wrap around the halyards, because it's the wind's great, perfect conditions. The boat's tacking really good just to tilt it and then bring it back and watch it unravel. And it gives you a bit more confidence instead of panicking if it happens to you when you're not expecting it. So now I know what to go through. We got the other sails ready to deploy just in case. The kettle lamp, a cup of hot chocolate or something. And it's not going to be good like this. Tomorrow will be the last day and it's going to be cloudy for a couple of weeks. So, feels good. Everything's looking good. We loaded up a bunch of bags today to store stuff on the boat. We're less than a couple of weeks away. Less than a couple of weeks away from leaving, so might as well get the kinks out. Yeah, get the kings out is right. We got the kings out, we're good to go. And so we're gonna go back up the coastline. And go back up, get into the and get into the bad stuff. Uh, but so now we have an underwater RV we can drive around with lights on it. Now we're gonna take the sailboat. Tow up the Zodiac. We'll have the other one will be on the roof, and the cabin stores way on that one. And we'll tow that up, tied onto an island. We can shoot either direction, long distances, and have the sailboat for foundation for. Because we need something now, because we have so much equipment that can handle it, and we need we need the ability to have some shelter because we went through misery on the last expeditions, right? So we got a totally different setup. So this was pretty miserable stuff because we we're limited. And now we got uh, redundancy in, in motors. If that motor breaks down, I'm done and I got a blown pontoon in this particular video, right? So once I get out in the middle of this channel, I got to go all the way up and get around the point to make it up to my other spot. And so now we've got a completely different outfit, a uh, little sailboat. I just put a couple of jury cans up in the bow if it's windy, days, right? And that, then I'll lean forward and that'll keep the bow down. And that cabin's not going to come off in those kinds of winds, right? And so we, we're doing this because we want to do species counts. So over the left is, is the same spot where I'm to right now, except there's nothing left on the rocks. It's, it's all gone because of Japan's melted reactors. And, and you're not allowed to um, take a picture of the coastline for some reason. That turned me into an absolute demon, apparently. The Canadian government gave me six gag orders to silence me about certain facets of this under penalty of jail and large fines for each time that I allegedly broached the subject. But they said they weren't stealing my freedom of speech. And they certainly did. I'm the good guy. Uh, all I do is show the actual documentation. So we're going to go up and do species counts because the species are missing. We're leaving in 11 days for six, seven months. And I want to remind everybody uh, how simple it is for me to lose everything in a drop of a hat. And so there's no guarantee I'm coming back with the information. We could lose the whole fleet anywhere on the coastline. And I'll be doing mostly open ocean. I'll be by myself because the industry has just destroyed me for four years straight, literally. And it's hard to get funding. We never... 
We never uh, expected to have to do things like this, okay? This wasn't part. Ten years ago, 20 years ago, I couldn't con perceive having to go out and do these expeditions. I thought we had universities and institutions. Now, um, we're going to talk about the mathematical equations. Flick through a couple of pictures, I guess, as I got them there. And so there's a sandbag, I'll show you pictures of it coming up, sits on the bottom of the camera, the camera's tied on. But you're talking about salt water, that camera's for interviews in the communities, but also for some uh, footage when t the conditions are appropriate. But mostly that camera is not going to be exposed to adverse conditions ever. Even though it is water resistant, it is meant for outdoor use, it is meant for rugged use, it's extremely high end. And we thank Veronica for the major contributions towards that, by the way. And everybody, of course, else. And there's always people out there who plays a major part in these types of... I don't know, there's a proper word for... Um, People, how, how, how do you uh, put together a huge operation like I got without people contributing? So you got your plan, you know what you need, you know what you got to get your hands on, you know what meets the basic standard of the industries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what is durable and is undeniable quality. You need quality, you need this, you need that, you need all kinds of attributes. And I think we burned something like $35,000 in fuel originally. And so an $8,000 sailboat makes a lot more sense, right? Than $35,000 in fuel again. It, right? Do you know what I mean? So the sailboat to me seemed more sensible than trying to go that route again. And like the money showed up, we went out and burnt it to the point where we, we blew the operation apart and I had to go do the whole coastline by myself. And I got stuck in port after port after port. And we would race, we were going against, we needed to know, right? So we, we tried everything in the world to get out as quick as we could to adverse conditions. And we failed a lot. We went on uh, bird expeditions throughout the coastline, 700 miles looking for birds, just dodging, looking for birds in a three or four day uh, run when the weather was permittable up the inside passages because we couldn't find them on the outside passages. We were, we were looking for an oasis of marine life left on the coastline of British Columbia that was comparable to the pictures I showed you earlier in the... In the post and pre and post Fukushima pictures. So let's get on with the story 20 minutes in. And so the camera is, this is a 30 pound sandbag and the bag drapes over the supports. So one leg on the ground, two legs up. Uh, and generally you want it more secure than that on top of that. But because I'm right there the whole time. So for the picture, it, it was acceptable, right? Let's get on with the show. But anyway, this is, these are all yesterday's picture. And, and then on the way back, I sailed back. So I had the big spanker for downwind. And then I sailed back up right after without using petrol. University of California. And, we, right, and that's how I'm going to do the whole... That's how I'm going to do the whole coastline with the fleet. And the idea of the three boats, they each got double motors on them because we just got another 2.3 horsepower for the little Zodiac. So it's got an eight. All of these are four-stroke engines, so they're usually just one pull and very reliable, like your automobile engine, very turnkey. We need that because I'm in an adverse conditions I'm in adverse conditions all the time, right? 
So we need some of that comfort because we're soaking wet and miserable. And this is the only species you would really find along the coastline. These are babies, by the way. These don't uh, signify health, but this is um, this is a dolomite passage. This is one of the most coveted places besides Louise Narrows on the planet. So this time we got to go do the take on the whole coastline again. And we're going to do it by myself again. And it's going to be just stupid amount of insane work. When you consider what yesterday alone was like, how much work that was and how sweaty it was and brutalized it was. It's going to be something else anyway. So the University of California did not include the fact that the New York Times had confirmed California rainwater had a 181 times above drinking water standard for radioactive iodine 131. Now, this is pretty, uh, you know, university can't find everything, right? And so the idea is to help the university. Uh, be able to utilize math properly because they're missing some of that math, right? You know what I mean? Now, we know this stuff comes over because when you look at approximate location of the Asian dust clouds, the dust is so much more heavier than the radioactive atoms with the isotopes in it. And this is probably why they missed it. But because they were expecting something really... And so heavy particles from Fukushima have no problem coming all the way across, specifically plutonium and uranium, particularly because of the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs from spraying the salt water on. It's a phenomenon at 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures where the sulfur turns into these spherical shapes like uh, soccer balls, and they're able to ingest the americium, neptunium, the hot particles or even not so hot particles, and but they turn into little uh, nuclear engines, super, they're highly, highly transportable, and they're not solutable in water, per se, they're easily liberated. So, you know, I'm worried the University of California might be utilizing the EPA, because the EPA, you know, is a public relations firm, and I'm just worried the University of California might not be aware of that. And so I'm coming up to make these videos to try to inform the academics, the students, and the parents of the students. EPA claimed that no harmful radiation could reach the U.S. is idiotic. Well, pff, suppose, because you think about China exports pollution to the U.S. through the jet streams. <laughs> Pretty silly, really. But the EPA says the federal government is monitoring the situation. Now, that's just almost as scary as Kathleen Higley in the U.K., who treats children for cancer by killing them with man-made radiation. I can so quantify for example, that. coming here, I would have got a dose of 0.07 millisieverts on the flight. Uh, and I actually went... Now, the stuff that happens on the airplane, that's got nothing to do with a chain reaction. Well, it does now, but it had nothing to do with a chain reaction. So when she, she's comparing flying on a plane now with the... This is reactor three, by the way. It was a 190-foot building. Here's a 190-foot building. I don't think that... I looked through the California... Uh, University of California Santa Cruz website. I didn't find any of these pictures like I got here. You can go to my website, the thenuclearproctologist.org, and you can download the pictures. The university can use them. You have my permission. It ran Fukushima Daiichi on Wednesday, and the dose that I had going around the site, so very close... She claims she's at the site to where the reactors are, it was 0.01 and probably lower, but that's the lowest it could actually read. <laughs> hey, mommy, that lady scares me. She's one of these people. Gonjin style. Gangnam style. Gangnam style. Hey, bring back the music. Hey, without the music, you look pretty stupid. Okay, with the music, I look stupid. But without the music, they look stupid. Those guys. So they, they told you, now they're growing rice right alongside the bag. They're, they're right there, like, chopping down the rice for market. And the bags are not photoshopped. And this is the newspaper. Now, we got the same problem in North America. This is... 
Noah's map. Noah. 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 Noah model cesium-137, but it didn't include all the other isotopes. And so this is, I'm worried sick that the University of California is doing the same thing, that they're, um, they're not aware of Noah's map of the radioactive fallout from the reactors, this dispersal based upon releases, but the building's actually detonated. We can get that in a little bit for sure. Just give me one second. So I can tell that story properly. So that model didn't include any of the curium. By the way, curium is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rod or its daughters. For anybody at the University of California, Santa Cruz, professor, academics, alumni, students, parents, whatever, donors, and links are below my video. If you, if you like my video, please donate. Isotopes of iodine, uh, there's more than 131. 131 meant there was a chain reaction. So if you get 131, the same issue because it has a short half-life. Uh, but it's, it's, it's easy to find with the Geiger counters the institutions are using. Therefore, uh, but all the other isotopes would have been there worse this way. Like for every iodine 131, there was 10 times more iodine 132. And for every iodine-131, there was 30 times more iodine-133. And the iodine-132 and 133 ionizes and radiates its iodide glands nine times more effective than the 131. And there was 31 more times 129 iodine. And so there's a mathematical equation, and, but uh, then there's a mathematical equation for how much xenon for every iodine-131 and all their daughters. There's mathematical equations for each one of these daughters and the creptons, uh, which is deadly, not like Superman. And, but the reactors actually run on uranium. All of them daughters would have been there, and plutonium. And I'm worried at the university because I don't see any indication that they're aware it is? Yeah, I know there, there's like nine universities gathered up under the one think tank, I mean, uh, institution. Neptunian and americium are very common hot particles you're going to find. They're very deadly, by the way. And the, for every cesium you find, there's 100 times more strontium-90. Every cesium-137, every 134, there's going to be... Like there's, for every 134, there's going to be this much your admiration, that much of these daughters, dad, daughters, those daughters. Do the, the, you get where I'm going? No? It's okay. Hang on. No, it's not easy. By the time you watch the rest of the video, if I don't um, procrastinate too much, radioactive particles appear to concentrate over the surface in Northern California. You might want to go look up that study. Now, there's academics out there are going to tell you. Imagine. Oh, there could be a five-fold increase in natural background radiation from the sort of material that's coming from Fukushima. It's just too far away. Now, we, we know that uh, studies on pollution says that the pollution come over, and we know that the isotopes are much smaller, the atoms are much smaller than um, the pollution and uh, anthropogenic industries that come across the Trans-Pacific Corridor, right? So when Busby is telling people he don't know how it gets over here, it's best to ignore Busby, okay? That's Dr. Christopher Busby. Obviously, he's working for the pro-nuclear industry to say something like that. He can't quantify it. 23% higher incidence of childhood leukemia within 16 kilometers of a nuclear facility the reason that those types of headlines are so important uh, is because they quantify the danger of the isotopes that are coming over in those uh, clouds, right? So then 90% higher incidence of childhood leukemia around a nuclear power plant. So would you raise your children around a nuclear power plant? Probably not, right? Child leukemia doubles near a French nuclear power plant, uh, says government study. Government study. Result is statistically significant, said the IRSN expert, which is France's expert. So when you see elevated radiation also in Germany, Sweden, Slovakia, 
in the University of California uh, should have been uh, taking all of its resources to help these countries, yeah? She said, hey, you got a cloud cover truck, get out the duct tape. It was so many months ago. Evidence for Trans-Pacific Air Pollution comes from three main sources, observational data. Wow. Friggin' scientists were brilliant, eh? Uh, computer simulation. What? Wow, man, I can't believe they do stuff like that. And research on concentration pollution, pollutants in various media. <laughs> so see, if the if University of California had been aware, they could have went out and found it. Right? They might have the data there, and they just don't know to look for it. So maybe everybody sent them this video. Trust me, I'm not as goofy as some of them, so you know. All right, I'm 131 now detecting Austria, Czech Republic, Hungary, other countries, an indicator of a nuclear chain reaction. Ten days after criticality talks at Fukushima. Huh. So when you look at studies of the importance, like 2007, the ejection height of biomass burning emissions in the boreal forest region, because the, the forest fires loft, the big, massive, incredible, huge, humongous, giant particles of pollutant way up into the atmosphere and is easily within three days then transported across the Pacific Ocean because the Jet streams are real. I know everybody's going to like, Dana, Busby said it's not real. Dana, when are you going to give it up? Well, I got a lot of data. Says Busby might not be the guy he says he is. Now, Poland and Denmark report radioactive dust. We're a little concerned, said the uh, goblins. I mean, uh, IAEA. TEPCO made Fukushima plant to a machine for generating radioactive water. See, that's, that headline becomes very important for the rest of the story. So trans-Pacific air pollution through the atmosphere, a rising global issue. China exports to U.S. study finds. Yeah, the wind's blown towards America. Burn that shit right now. Burn it. It's going to America. Hey, America. I'm not saying America's bad. Don't get me wrong. I love Americans. I'm trying to mimic what the Chinese, I'm just, scenario. That's all. I'm just, don't hate me. I like America. Woo! We're, we're like, every Canadian got pictures of Americans on their wall. We all hope our children grow up someday and be American. Japan doctor, completely beyond comprehension how huge the contamination of ocean will be. Ooh. Fukushima radioactive material is poured into landfills to enter the sea and it's spreading all over the world. The world. You know, like trans-Pacific air pollution can do, right? And that doesn't just come to America and it all goes, it actually goes all over the world. But there's a lot that's deposited in North America, particularly California. Now, this headline is really confusing. Farmers harvest rice in one of uh, the paddies in Fukushima Prefecture, but it's not just a paddy. It's a paddy surrounded by uh, one-ton bags. So would you grow rice at Hanford? Because it would actually be a lot safer. <laughs> it'll still kill you pretty soon, but it'll still be a lot. There's no such thing as safe, I should say. But it's, uh, you live a little couple extra years, maybe, if you eat that rice instead of this rice. You eat this rice, you can get leukemia tomorrow. Not maybe, either. You get leukemia tomorrow. And leukemia is where your blood, your body is full of radiation, your body's attacking with white blood cells. And you displace your oxygen, red carrying blood cells that also carry the nutrients. It's complicated. Um, was there something else I had that there? You oh. have failed me for the last time. Yeah, you, you, you can't grow rice right by the bag, okay? Like, like we can put up a lot of shit, but that, that's like way over. That's just wrong, man. 
I bounced. Hang on. Everything was going good. I was in a rhythm. Then I bounced. Oh. Ah. Okay. So, Mysterious Cloud, a dangerous iodine-131 over Europe is absolutely cause for concern. Yet, um, so we know, we know this stuff because of the Trans-Pacific Air Pollution Studies. And there's so many, I can't keep up with them. This one was 16 hours ago, look at that. That's how friggin' good I am. And Trans-Pacific Transport of Ozone Pollution and Scientific Evidence. I got so much, I could, I could probably, I could teach a course at, at the University of California on Fukushima. How about that? Instead of giving me a baseball cap for all the work I've done, I already gave me a, a long tenor there at the University of California with a live show just like this one here. Japan officials issue Fukushima radioactive, uh, radioactivity alert. The radioactive discharge is out of control. Contamination is seeping into the ocean. Seeping into the ocean from the whole country nonstop in every friggin' orifice. Like the word seeping? Such a betrayal. You almost want to pull the hair out of every journalist's head for that one. Nuclear fallout will engulf Taiwan starting April the 6th. People should stay home or take off their clothes and cleanse the nuclear contaminants. <laughs> so Taiwan is a good group. I like you guys. You guys are stand up. That's some stand up shit, man. Because they knew, like us, and we're trying to educate the University of California, I went through a lot of work, too. The American business interest meets air pollution transport. Now, we think that got something to do with the jet stream, but we're not 100% sure. I forgot to get the nummies on that one. Trans-Pacific air pollution, yeah, American business. There's, there's, like, there's a little bit of evidence saying that the jet stream very well could be real. It could be. At the height of Fukushima emergency regions in California, which happened to be the subject of the day. What's the odds of that, man? Woo! I didn't even know I had that one here. Let me turn that down a little tiny bit. I'm sorry about it. And hello to everybody in the live show here today. Welcome to the live show. Welcome later to you folks worldwide. Let me guess. No, no comments again today, is it? Oh, we got the comments there. Mouse. Hi, everybody. Your moderator is in blue. Is it Elaine? And Debbie's not hanging out anymore because the trolls have tortured her so much and humiliated her and attacked her so relentlessly she doesn't feel safe being on the net here anymore. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Strontium Milk. I bid you too. And Jace. And Lindy. See? I read comments. It's kind of interesting because now the comments shows up whether I save them or not. Hi, Joe. And Joe is here. Joe Moore. And Joe uh, was poisoned at Rocky Flats and suffers terrible illnesses. Hi, Miss Frill. Miss Frill has a blog out there, folks. You want to show it in the comments section for us, please? Or somebody. Hi, everybody. And Miss Frill was down uh, in during those supercell storms where the winds hit 240 mile per hour gust in her neighborhood, destroyed every building in her community. Every building. Yeah, and yeah, and extra hugs for Elaine, folks. 
We'll make sure to tell her story in the future, the things she has done. Lance, for this operation, is amazing. Just the endless support and ability to know the difference. Thank you, thank you, Sacramento. Hi, Amy. Just a little interlude to say hi to everybody. There you go. Elaine's got a link. I forgot to bring it up on the screen like an idiot, did I? I'm looking here instead of there. Not very often that happens to me, is it? Hi, everybody. Yeah. I read light. Viddy, Spear. That's Miss Frill's website. Elaine just put right there, folks. The WordPress, Flying Cuttlefish. Thank you, Elaine. And hi, everybody. Spriggs. Anybody I don't get, my apologies. Let's get busy. Let's get back and rock and roller. But everybody has to know how much I appreciate the facts that people can show up here regularly. These are difficult things for me to do, these live shows, and a little bit of support goes a stupid amount away for me. I'm still going to do the work. I'm still going to be here. But it allows my personality to, to get out, right? When I interact with people, you, you get... Like, I like that fact that people... And I don't do it on, it's not on purpose, but I look back at it and this, this is my take on it, is my, my personality on these show really shows up when I'm interacting because you see I'm the exact same person in real life. I'm like this, if someone talked to me, this is, they get the same answers I give you here except I can't show them the documentation. At the height of California emergency, regions in California where the plume had had no monitors. The emails show the EPA decided not to deploy the RADnet to the area. So wasn't it uh, the California's university's obligation? They say it's not their mandate to look for fallout from Fukushima. Not, not, not. Really? Really? So, like, if you had a nuclear accident in California, you wouldn't volunteer to help because that would... That would confuse the students and the parents that are paying for it and the local community because you've been lying to them for so many years or misrepresenting the significance. And, and, and so these chicken eggs have taken over our institutions and they're breeding chicken eggs. And you, it's not too late to escape the brainwashing. American business interests meet air pollution, trans-Pacific regional atmospheric transport of anthropogenic air pollution, which is man-made. Inexplicable, the EPA shut down the Fukushima radiation monitoring after finding high levels of radiation in the drinking water, high levels. It's very hard to imagine how there could be a five-fold increase in natural background radiation from the sort of material that's coming from Fukushima. It's just too far away. You say it's too far away, eh? Here's another model from another institution of the Fukushima dispersal based upon just a couple of days' releases, not the actual accidents, not the meltdowns, not the loss of the inventories. And there's no way to tell the story. There's lickety split, really. That's why these videos are the way they are. So these are not based upon, for instance, that's reactor four over there where they told you they got the fuel pools at the top of the building, right? So there's the fuel pools at the top of the building. There's the reactor cores goes up to the top of the building. Everything is underwater at the top of the building to transfer the fuel into the pools and then also to transfer fuel into the reactors it has to be underwater, right? So the reactor building over there was 190 feet high, 150 feet wide. It's the exact model of this one right here. It's actually missing, see? 
And the other builder buildings are similar damage to that one there. And so at the top of the building was uh, decades of reactor cores. Chernobyl didn't have that feature. Thank goodness. And because of Chernobyl, they banned freshwater fishing in Ireland or Scotland, Switzerland, for 28 years. Because of Chernobyl, you can't sell the meat or drink the milk or sell the land in certain parts of Scotland, Ireland, and UK because of the fallout from Chernobyl. In Belarus, Ukraine, there's 3 million children with permanent disabilities, orphanages full of disabled children that are disfigured or missing vital organs, limbs, and features. There's nothing else on the planet that has those attributes as a byproduct. So if you, if you have a meltdown, you have to run away and leave your, your part of your country. Like, why would you have that on your planet? How did you get that stupid to put something like this on you? Oh, it's just carbon-free. Like, please, anybody says that should be shot on site, just figuratively should be ridiculed. But, you know, like, you can't say the word media. Media is not going to pick up the... Because they've been, the media has just, and your uni, and California University is out there right now telling everybody it's like a banana. The radiation is like walking in sunshine. The radiation is like getting on an airplane and you get the rest of it, right? So, by the way, there was a, it was much worse than the 1,800 pounds they're alluding to here. June 3rd, meeting in 2011 revealed depleted uranium storage facility. This was fuel rods had caught fire, and there was a lot more than that. This wasn't pounds, this was tons, most likely. Disappointing. EPA will no longer conduct radiation monitoring related to Fukushima. Results haven't been updated for a week. So the smoke injection heights from fires in North America, and it talks about how it's transportable because the higher it goes, the farther it can travel. This is the radioactive fallout from another model from the Norwegian Institute for Air Research, who were shut down shortly after, had modeled the radioactive fallout based upon the wind and the confirmed releases. But the confirmed releases were very tiny to compare to the actual damage. So it wasn't just a reactor core. It was reactor cores and the fuel pools, which are the equivalents. So a meltdown is different. Totally different than a nuclear bomb is gone in one millionth of a second. Meltdown never stops. The chain reaction never goes away. These models that are only based up on a tiny fraction, just a tiny fraction of the isotope, that's only cesium or xenon-133. I know, xenon-133. Krypton xenon. So xenon-133... It's not based up on the other isotopes or the other isotopes and their daughters or the other isotopes and their daughters, right? The model is only based up on the xenon-133, based upon, but it's not based up on the inventories of the reactor cores that are stored, and Chernobyl didn't do that. They would never have got people close enough to it. They had to abandon it. The helicopters couldn't even uh, drop water on this destroyed reactor because it was more there than xenon, see? Xenon just happens to be a tracer. Even though it was found in the U.S. food supply, the organic milks was another one. Busby. It's very hard to imagine how there could be a five-fold increase in natural background radiation from the sort of material that's coming from Fukushima. It's just too far away. And this is France's model that he knew existed unequivocally, and he, but he does the same interview all over the place, over and over and over and over and over, year after year, see? It's not like it's just a single one-off. Own zone production, trans-Pacific air pollution, plumes, and implications. See, even they say the jet streams are real. The University of California probably doesn't even know any of this exists. They probably think the jet stream's not real like that guy. I'm just saying, right? Large radiation cloud nearing California from the Norwegian Institute for Air Research. Now, why would he say something like that? That's blasphemy. Okay, now it's not. 
Well, they're saying it because, you know, the transboundary pollution influences aerosol concentrations in the states, concentrate all over California, and, and linger there for months at a time, certain points of the year, right? Adds to their uh, pollution index. It's from uh, pollution from Asian countries. U.S. government statement about safe radiation actually undermines the confidence. So even back then, they were alluding that it was rivaling Chernobyl, but then the models were only a reflection of now people says you know, Tokyo 2020 Olympics. But you got to think about they picked up 30 million one-ton bags in Japan. 30 million one-ton bags, because it didn't all just come straight over, see? Now, then rain caused 130 schools in Korea to close. The rain caused it because the jet streams were real, see? It also goes to Korea and China and everywhere else. And so they closed 130 schools in Korea, but the rain in California had 10 times more. Is that why the University of California I forgot to put it in the mat? And so the people in California and the university didn't know about it? So a couple of people at the University of California de stopped everybody else at the University of California from knowing that this could happen? No. All the professors would have known. We're just trying to correct their math, that's all. And so there's 120,000 sites in Japan like this. They were picking up 489 of these bags a minute. It's 11,000 an hour or something like that for seven years. The distribution of atmospheric aerosols, transport, transformation, and removal. See, again, another study say the jet streams are real. What's the friggin' odds of that? And Noah made a model just based upon. Um, the model is only based upon 137. Based over 40 days, I'm going to speed it up to uh, 20 days. Here's 20 days in. And so the model is 137. It doesn't include any of the curium isotopes or their daughters. Or, uh, it does include 131, though. That's true, but it doesn't include the other iodines. We know the ratios. I told you some of that, how that works earlier in the video. It doesn't include the xenon that we confirmed, or the krypton we confirmed, by the way. And we found uranium in people's uh, fingernails and pee in Hawaii, plutonium, americium, neptunium was discovered in North America, cesium, of course, and all their daughters, and strontium was found, by the way. And possibly years before the crisis could end. Yeah, but when you're talking about zipper heads whose whole life revolves around pretending they're cool with a surf, surfboard, and like they didn't put the stuff in these bags that, by the way, will disintegrate in a year for something to do. So, like, there's a lot, I'm just saying there's a lot of stupid people out there. And just because you see somebody that's handsome or, or dressed up or got a surfboard, and you like surfing, that doesn't make it cool, see? But that's the uh, implications. They ran away and left their communities. Not all of them, right? But they ran away and left their communities and their money and their banks and full of money, their hospitals with people in it and billion dollars worth of equipment, their liquor stores full of liquor, the malls full of consumer goods, car lots full of brand new cars, boat lots full of brand new boats, and motorcycle lots full of brand new motorcycles and ran away. You know why? You don't want to buy any new cars from those, uh, those 2011 on unless you could confirm it actually, like it could have been shipped to Japan and out of shipping it out of there. Because you won't think, oh, well, it's not a Japanese car. But they, they import a lot of cars, is what I'm saying, right? Humanity as a whole has literally never experienced something like Fukushima. 
We'll be fighting the radiation on the order of tens of hundreds of years. Tens of hundreds of years. So just, you know, say thousands of years is probably more sensible, but whatever. Get you to sleep at night, I suppose. Washington Air Monitor shows sustained radiation spike on March the 31st and goes out of service. Same city where the 131 was found in the drinking water. Gee, I wonder how that got there. You don't suppose Busby's wrong and that jet streams are real. Meet Goblin Richard Vetter from the University of Berkeley. Uh, there's probably someone on the panel foolish enough to address that question. <laughs> but we are radiation safety professionals, and the licensing of nuclear power plants is really kind of out of our scope. I'm going to ask Dr. Vetter to talk briefly here. You have, have, haven't had an opportunity. I know you're an expert in dosimetry uh, and, and measurements. So, Well, uh, the reason I haven't had, had an opportunity to talk is because there are no problems in the medical field. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they laughing? Why were they laughing? So that's frightening somebody done that, that everybody laughed. The people in the audience are the journalists, by the way. So they grow rice, growing rice, right where the bags are. And the media is coming out and complaining because they're saying people are uh, stigmatizing the farmers without quantifying it. But you have to show you a picture with the bags of radiation and saying, well, why won't you buy the farmer's rice? She's got to make money, but it's the government that's paying for it. Toxicity of inhaled plutonium dioxides in beetle dogs, 144 dogs. Now, there's a just endless amount of these studies that they've done in different countries worldwide. From this, from this. Moreover, I think that one of the questions, which is a very difficult question. And now he's from the Simon Fraser University, we covered him a few days ago. And he says there's no harm to the Pacific coastline. So it's a very controversial question. It's a question of low level exposure, okay? And the, the reason uh, this question is controversial is that it is very difficult to put your hand on the hard data on low-level exposures. Low-level exposure is very difficult to quantify. So 144 dogs got low-level, inhaled one or two sizes monodispersal inhalation, and starting your third sentence, all 144 dogs died, by the way. Tumors of the lungs, the skeleton, the liver occurred beginning about three years after exposure. And so Canada has put a, a stop distribution order on DCA, dectochloride acid, which is just a mineral, and was shown in studies when given to rats who put DCA in their water. They didn't, like, do something special with it. All they done was put it in the water, and they noticed that the tumors decreased by 70% in about three weeks. Tumors of the lungs, the liver, the pancreas, the brain tumors, breast tumors, uh, heart tumors had decreased by 70%. And um, this study has been repeated, by the way, it's peer review studies about the DCA. But Canada, that was my microphone on my end, they probably jumped it. But Canada on my end, uh, Canada has made it so that no one in Canada will distribute DCA. They say, and they say another study recently where they were talking about the government is saying they don't want the Canadians to treat their own cancers. But this, like uh, chocolate bar is more harmful. This has been used on exotic illnesses and it had no adverse effects on the human population whatsoever. It's just a mineral, right? And there's no patent on it. You don't need a prescription for it. So you're not treating cancer. You're avoiding the chemotherapy where only 3% of the people live longer than they would have without the treatment. Everybody else dies from the treatment. See, this is why the dogs die. When you gave it to the dogs, they all die. When you give it to the people, they all die. The guy at Simon Fraser University, his partner, Paul Schaefer, he got $6 million when this happened 
for 15 months to, to come up with medical isotopes that'll kill you, right? And so that's $20,000 a day to pay the journalist to come out and say that it's innocuous and benign and harmless, that it's like, it's good for you, it's everywhere, it's like climbing a mountain, it's like a banana. Now, they don't say a banana very often anymore. If we catch them, they get pounded into the ground for it. But the guy who done the study and all the dogs, who killed all the dogs, had this to say about Fukushima. Part of uh, how people think that they're protecting themselves by going off and getting KI, but in, KI being potassium iodide. Um, unfortunately, it's probably not going to do them any good. Why not? Because here in New Mexico, uh, we're not going to get exposed to any radio iodine. Dr. Gil May has researched radioactive respiratory health for four decades in New Mexico. He says this run on iodine... Loveless. Loveless. Research Institute of New Mexico. Dr. Raymond Gilmetti, his name is there somewhere. They, they kill the beagle dogs and puppies. There's, men, there's not just him, but they, they rolled him out to say there would be no harm when his studies showed that it killed all the animals and all the experiment. You tell me that's not twisted, then something wrong with your head. Unprecedented phenomenon from using salt water in the Fukushima reactors, in the reactors. They were spraying it out of a hose because 680 miles of the coastline got washed away. There was no power. There was no running water. This was desperation that they knew during the nuclear testing that uh, the high heat would create these sulfur peroxide hydrogen compounds that would ingest uh, atoms with the isotopes in it, these buckyballs. So... Over 1,000 nuclear workers, internal radiation, 10,000 counts per minute after visiting Fukushima. Visiting Fukushima. Interesting choices of words, because that's all you ever see him do is walking around. Oh, we were there. We seen it. It was okay. That's, that's the, the theory, see? And they're working on it. This is a sniper run. These people would have all died within a short period of this. That's Medusa over there. The whole site is a Medusa. 1,600 Fukushima workers thought to be exposed to high radiation, which is gamma shine and x-rays, neutrons, and, 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 and the, 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 these paper suits can't protect you from... You need four-foot thick steel suits or lead suits to protect you. Not that that would either. So, the, like, the tank, the water in the tank is at two sievers a liter, where they're telling you, oh, no, it's just tritium. Yeah, it's just tritium. They're spraying water over it, and they're pumping it out and putting it in the tanks and saying they can filter it. They can't filter it because the filter itself becomes a medusa. It becomes many sievers, too many sievers to even get back in the building. So they send in the, the day workers, go in there and get a, bring this bucket in there, and then that's all you got to do today. There's people getting uh, like $3,000 a day to convince them to go over there so they can get a picture of them. I kid you not. And then they kick them loose when they get a nosebleed and they die shortly after. 40% of the Fukushima visitors show internal exposure to radiation. Internal exposure to radiation. This is why they ran away and left their supermarkets and communities behind. And they're picking up the bags to try to trick you into going back. Four of 11 radiation monitors were offline in California. So the University of California, Santa Cruz, for some reason, missed this too. Was it on purpose? Because they say Fukushima is not bad and didn't pollute the local area, but we got a lot of evidence saying it did. So California, strawberries, mushrooms with the CC-137, Found in California with that nasty 137. But it would have had all, they didn't check for that. They didn't check for that cesium. They didn't, and all the cesiums, they didn't check for all the isotopes. The biggest byproduct is curium. It acts like plutonium. Right? They didn't check for xenon. They didn't check for all the krypton. Do you get it? Fukushima plume models showed a million becquels over the West Coast. 
So California and UC Berkeley said there is no plume. This is what California had said. So they got to change that because that's how they're screwing up the equation. Do you get what I'm saying? So they pick up all these bags there, chop down all these trees, and then they grow food there and try to ship it over here. Fukushima plume, one million becquels a meter over the West Coast. So the whole west coast of North America should be picked up and put in bags, one-ton bags. Like 30 million of these one-ton bags. Now, when you hear that one million becquels over the west coast, 50 becquels in humans lead to irreversible lesions in vital organs. When you got one million becquels per meter and 50 becquels a kilogram in your food, will harm you. You can think about when it rained, California, Simon Fraser University, by the way, found this one and says there's nothing, it's okay, we're allowed to have so many. It was all fake, right? Because they're getting $6 million. Rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine, 131 per liter, fell on the U.S. during post-Fukushima peak. So you can see why I'm attacked and vilified and demonized and why they arrest me and give me gag orders and why I don't stop. One, like, I don't want to go out in the ocean. Do, you, do people actually understand that part? Because you might not come back, right? And, and the more you spend on the ocean, the more you realize how true that one is. But we've done everything we can to have all the redundancy. And if I'm given the latitude, I, I won't have to take chances. And I'll just play it safe the whole time. But if people don't support me, I'll have to take chances to make it work. Because we're going to find out if the extinction event is still true. It's going to take me seven months. We're leaving in 10, 11 days. And so every video I can do from here on out is so important because I'm leaving. And there's no guarantee I'll be coming back, yeah? And because the job I got ahead of me is extraordinarily difficult. And I'm going to do everything I can, don't get me wrong. And I'm pretty cagey when it comes to the ocean. Not fond of getting the shit scared out of myself or worse. Don't like it at all. Got a, got a whole lot of issues with that part of the expedition <laughs> where everything can be gone on the drop of a hat. So you might say I got all kinds of gear, but that could be gone in the morning that I wake up and head out. Oops. Boat don't see me and runs me over. I hit a log and I don't realize it and actually start sinking the boat flounders. The stories are endless. Study 150,000 square kilometers Pacific with Fukushima nuclear material. If it was just, uh, you, like, this is what drives me insane. You pick up 30 million one-ton bags for your country, it washes, the whole country washes into the Pacific Ocean. The whole ocean was covered in radioactive plumes. Computer simulation shows how radioactivity is spread around the world from the disabled Fukushima Daiichi plant. The simulation was created by a group of researchers of, at the University of Tokyo and Kyushu University and released on Wednesday. So the, the ocean is covered. The scenario in which Contaminated air was vented from the disabled number two reactor building on March 14th, three days after the massive earthquake. In so he said vented, right? So the model that he's going to show you coming up is based upon venting. It's not based upon losing the, all the inventory. Okay. Tsunami. Computer images show the radioactive material was lifted by... So you can see it covers the Pacific Ocean and the North America. So we can't ignore it. We got to have a conversation about it. And 50 becquels a kilogram starts leaving lesions in your organs. Then their limit of 100 becquels a kilogram is going to leave lesions in your organs. And why would you want to grow food? Like, that's what's really confusing. Why grow food in one of the most radiated places on the planet where you abandoned, ran away, and left everything behind? Because you had to. Wind from Fukushima will shift towards Tokyo tomorrow. 
ABC calls radiation plume over your massive but harmless ABC. And like these are, their whole thing is based on conjectures instead of hungry lab, likely source of iodine, a massive cloud, a lab. So February the 17th, West Coast hit with 220 million atoms per liter of rainwater. Does rain fall by the leader in your community across your country? And when it falls, what happens to radiation? It binds to everything like I showed you earlier. It's electrically charged and it pulses every second after that. Hi, everybody. Hey, just eat from some other oceans. If you forced, if you have to eat seafood, eat from a different ocean. At least do that much. <coughs> Idaho paper. Radnet monitors were shipped out of Boise on Tuesday. Don't expect any updates soon. So throughout the whole video, we we hit California headline, then we go all around it and show you everything else that was happening. It's back to California. Then we show you everything else. It's happening around the world. So you got a whole picture. But California got smoked. And the University of California, Santa Cruz, is ignoring all every single bit of it. Not a single peck of information I show today. Uh, Santa Bar uh, the University of California, Santa Cruz Institution, uh, refused to pass on to the population, the public. Nuclear expert are horrified that the feds abandoned the Fukushima radiation monitoring. We've seen uh, Simon Fraser University said that uh, that wasn't their mandate. And when asked, did they monitor? So, well, that's not our mandate. Yeah, but you got a nuclear accident, you got a nuclear institution, nuclear labs. Yeah, but, but, but that, we're, we're, we're to promote nuclear. We're not there to look for if there's an accident. How are you going to promote nuclear if, if you start talking about accidents? Jeez. So Pennsylvania and Massachusetts exceeded, which meant there was a chain reaction and all the other isotopes would have been there, yeah. Every, every time that you see those confirmations, and I'm going to speed that up, it's another model. You can see the whole Pacific is covered. See that? No, Dina. So the whole Pacific is covered and the continent, it washes back down to the coastlines ultimately. That's why I studied the tidal zones, the nursery of the ocean. And that's why what I do is so unique on this planet right now. So it's the one point in history where somebody should do what I'm doing. We're the last ones to ever do a species count. You can, you can count the species each day on your two hands. One species, two species, three. Four. Oops, sorry. This time we're going to have the drone. We'll have that tomorrow, hopefully. We got the underwater camera. I got some of the kinks out of that again, getting much better at it. It's overwhelming. I'm going to leave in 11 days. So the internet's going to be gone in about nine days or 10 days. I'm turning that off. I'm not going to pay the, the extra money each month when I'm on the ocean for seven months or something. And I'm just terrified that I'm not going to get the support. It takes uh, five or six days for money to show up in my account. So if people don't donate in the next four or five days, then whatever I got, I got, I'm going anyway. But horrible medical mystery, alarming rate of birth defects in Washington. I'll feel better with the money in my account in case something happens along the way, right? Because I have to transfer the money to my account. And that once I transfer it, then it takes five or six days. But if I don't get to my emails to transfer it, then it doesn't go to my account until I get to my emails. And when I get the email, find the internet connection for a week or more. This was a problem I went through the last time, and it's okay, we'll deal with it, but things are, it's a lot easier to get an internet connection now, I think. I'm going into a, where there's no communities whatsoever, but 
heading all the way towards the Alaska border, basically do species counts, mammal counts along the way, get up there, get safe, get settled down, and work my way down the coastline over seven months. So hot spots were detected in Seoul and South Korea, emitting a thousand times normal background radiation. Whenever you hear these words, I just want to kick the shit out of somebody. <laughs> No offense to anybody out there, but I just want to snap somebody's mouth for saying the word normal background radiation when we're talking about nuclear or nuclear accidents. Because normal background got absolutely nothing to do with the equation. Any, any institution that says the word normal background radiation should be charred and fenered and ran out of town on a, on a log. Honest to goodness, it's sickening that they're still saying these words. I'm so sick of the word uh, natural background radiation. I literally want to yell every time I hear it now. I'm disgusted with contempt, with, with dis disgust. Japan unveils plans to develop massive government backup city 300 miles west of Tokyo because... Tokyo is like this. We've seen Tokyo with almost a million becquels a square meter. We've seen some spots in Tokyo, 29 million becquels a square meter. After rain. And it rains a lot. Like, woo! So these reactors are still emitting into the atmosphere, by the way. Hot spots at the 1400 baseline radiation levels in the San Francisco area coast. It's... It's naturally occurring material, not radioactivity associated from Fukushima. See, this is insanity. Expert, don't let the babies eat or inhale or eat the sand. Because we know it's from Fukushima. It washes back down to the coastline. That's where you would expect to find the high numbers. If you're, if you're, but you're calibrated for the short-lived, not the long-lived the isotopes. These plumes are not maybe. Like the, those plumes are not maybe, okay? They're, they're maybe because they're not based upon the actual inventory at all. But when you look at all these different models, you see how they cover everything. But everything on the west side of the Rocky Mountains washes towards the Pacific. And everything on the east side washed towards the Atlantic. And you can see that the Atlantic got pounded. But the big heavy stuff constantly flowing into the Atlantic and falling out and hitting the Rocky Mountains. And the clouds will come in and hit the Rocky Mountains and lose their payload, right? And so Obama's picked it to lead the EPA is from the Office of Air and Radiation, where the RADnet didn't work. Now is in charge of the EPA and is repeatedly. So the University of California got to got to pick up the stuff I'm doing here so they can tell the story. Radiation limits too high after Fukushima, so Japan allows 20 times more cesium in drinking water than near Chernobyl. But does that mean it's safe? No. Does that mean you can have the Olympics in a place like this? Of course not. Does that mean you can eat the food there? Of course not. Does that mean you should be going to these ghost towns and putting money in those vending machines? to get little girl panties out of the vending machines? Of course not. Because that's what some of these vending machines sell. So Jan by, Japan, by proxy, is a frigged up country. Like if, like if you're a country where you sold, and you are, so little girl's panties used in vending machines for perverted purposes, not because they're cheaper for the little girls. <laughs> they're not using the vending machines to buy it. They're getting all the panties to put in it. So when you're in, dealing with a society like that, you need people like me to come out and, like a lot of people are like, Dana, that's too much. Well, that's the truth. That's the society we're talking about. So it's not hard stretched to imagine them saying the food is safe and that is safe for the children because they couldn't care less about the children. They got vending machines selling panties for perverts. Experts call calling for wider Japanese evacuations. Officials would have to evacuate 
1,800 kilometers, this is back in the day. Numbers change all the time. 8,000 square miles now, a radiation control area, Lake 1. Um, 30,000 square contaminated with cesium, or 8,000 with cesium at 30,000 backwards. 55 backwards, it's not 1,000, but 55 like fits on a bus or an airplane. People is an evacuation zone, 55 backwards. Extremely dangerous, 14,000 kilometers in another emission, 20,000 kilometers in another emission, uh, 10,000 backwards a square meter for 30,000, 8% of the nation, 60,000 according to Calicut. Now, she was just reciting other people's research and she was put on a pedestal where she didn't belong. Calicut said they were getting the fuel out of, out of uh, Reactor 4. Right, and reactor four is over there. It doesn't exist. Ernie Gunderson said they for two years come out and made video after video how dangerous it was to get the fuel out of the pool. He made the assemblies. He's still out there promoting his version of Fukushima, and there's no agencies holding him accountable. Police should arrest Busby, Calicut, and Gunderson and, and Maggie Magpie too. Right for perpetrating. This hoax upon the country. Look at the, the BBC. Iran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. So his face is where the fuel pools are in the building. See the building behind him? Right? So the fuel pools are up there. He made the assemblies for the pool, but he doesn't know it's gone from number four. Like if you believe that or that he was threatened, and, well, if he was threatened, he should have shut up and went away. He, his job, because he was threatened, if someone threatened me, should I come out and lie to you? I got six gag orders. Do you see me run away? He's got an endless amount of support. I got nothing near it. But I got the right people support me with just enough support for me to get the shit done. And it took two years to gather up all the equipment. I kind of went overboard with everything I'd done, and I couldn't accomplish it all. But I damn well come close to getting everything I ever asked for to go do the expedition to bring back the documents so there could be no questions this time. No one can doubt the stuff I'm doing that we're doing this time. When they say 400 tons a day, the reactors need a million gallons a minute, 4,500 tons a minute. So how is 400 tons a day, which is what they're... See, the fire hoses were pumping 300 tons a day at the reactors. That was the original number. Remember those numbers in the future because you'll hear about them if you go back and look through history. But uh, you need 4,500 tons of water per minute per reactor. And so the 400 tons are spraying down in the buildings, not in the buildings, they're spraying out of West. They've got the destitute in there spraying it, washes down, that washes out into the ocean. These are ludicrous assertions. There's so much more than that, it's inconceivable. It's probably doing that a minute. And so a chain reaction meltdown is different. It's an ongoing nuclear bomb every minute. TEPCO went on for two years, massive amounts. Now, Arnie calls it bleeding. Officials on are unable to explain why they kept it secret and didn't tell people there was massive amount. So 400 tons is not a massive amount, trust me. And 400 tons is a number used to deceive you, manipulate you, and trick you. The ice wall, they say, there's only 90 tons now. 260,000 people worked on an ice wall, the building ice wall. This was a bullshit story. But this is what the media, media is incapable of uh, being honest. You go to the media looking for tidbits. You have to verify every sentence before you use it in the media. Discharges of the Fukushima nuclear material into the Pacific have effectively contaminated the sea. Melted reactor cores will burn again if water is not perpetually poured in. And TEPCO is proposing some of it being dumped into the ocean. They're talking about fuel into the ocean, dumping fuel into the ocean because it's too hot to get close to them. And because they'd rather be buying panties at a vending machines and doing their jobs throughout the whole country, legislated that everybody's entitled to have a panty vending machine in their community. Japan's government is in chaos, completely out of control. Not just Fukushima, with friggin' vending machines too. 
Melted reactor cores are contaminating the Pacific with a full range of radioactive material. A full range of radioactive material. Remember all the isotopes, black pictures I was showing you earlier? I'm not going to go back and do it. Radioactive material spews into the air in the Sea of Fukushima. And so the University of California has to get um, some of this narrative there so the people in California can de defend themselves, protect themselves. So every community, if you're not going to move out of your communities, then you should be growing organic seeds right on the side of the road everywhere, distribute to every household, get out and grow food everywhere for the insects, for the bacteria, because you got to do something now. See, you look at Venezuela, where everybody's starving to death now, that country is an irritable country full of uh, fertile land. If you were to just distribute the seeds throughout the country, within months you would solve the food crisis. You can grow enough food there. Everybody got seeds. Everybody went out and started growing food. wouldn't take long for that country to bounce back. They would have bounced back. They wouldn't be in the position they are right now. Instead, they're all waiting out. Some, what do they call it? A food bank or something. In their countries. But if you gave them seed and show them how to grow it, literally just put it in the ground in most places, walk away. You don't have to worry about the insects or birds anymore. Water now at Fukushima plant is three times more cesium Chernobyl. These are uh, huge underestimations of the actual severity and the implications. 400 tons a day is, uh, 400 tons a minute is a more appropriate number. U.S. newspaper reports on a link between birth defects and eating radioactive uh, contamination. One piece of contaminated food delivers hundreds of x-rays. Like an x-ray is something you turn on and off, by the way. This stuff is in your body. It pulses every second. The more you eat, the more you got in your body pulsing. The more pulsing in your body, the less oxygen because it's displaced by the red, the white blood cells, displacing the red blood cells. So the ammonia nitrate and dust nitrate coming across the Pacific Ocean, this is much heavier than the radioactive isotopes. It's coming over from the same area. It wasn't generated at the enormous heat. It's dust, right? It's just being picked out of the ground into the atmosphere and dragged across. The stuff we're talking about is being wafered up at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. There were original detonations that confirmed that the three mile little plumes straight up. Can't be changed, can't be stopped because there's only chicken necks in charge. David Suzuki. We're going to. End it here, coming up. Hang on. Dana. I'll get it. Hang on. There you go. I got it. I played a long version. David Suzuki. Now, I'm going to give you a picture of the building. The building looks like that over there. But the media, there's a better way to tell the story. Hang on. Well, I'm going to play that clip for you. Don't get me wrong, but i got to bring in another picture. Reactor 4. Oh. This is the way the reactors go. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. We're oh, good. She's claiming she's in the building over there. Okay. Now, David Suzuki is looking at the building over there and not her. Now, that's important. So, we're going to start off with that one. And I'm going to jump out. It's only a short clip of David Suzuki saying that if the building to the left tips over, by the way, it doesn't exist, it's bye-bye Japan and it should evacuate North America. Now, think about that statement, though. If a building tips over, it's bye-bye Japan, a country. So if I drop a nuclear bomb on Japan, is it bye-bye Japan? No. But if a building tips over, it's bye-bye Japan. Now, I'll let David say the rest. So just to recap, when you look at the pictures, all of number four is missing and all of number three is missing. 
And so the fuel pools were up close to the top of the building. They're long gone. David, I think you had something you wanted to say. That the fear is there's another earthquake of a seven or above that that building will go and then all hell breaks loose. And the probability of a seven or above earthquake in the next three years is over 95%. I have seen a paper which says that if in fact the fourth plant goes under an earthquake and those rods are exposed, it's bye bye Japan and everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate. So everybody on the uh, coast of North America should evacuate. Now, this is CNN on the right, fake and being in the building to your left, because it's actually that serious. We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011, leading to the country's worst nuclear disaster. Right. And so the radioactive iodine showed up in Pennsylvania, and the atmospheric science, we know this is actually real. So all David Suzuki had to do was say, look, she's in a fake building, folks, they're tricking you, right? That's all you had to do. And because the chicken necks are in charge, that lady's freaking out, don't worry about it. We're, show's over. Hugs for everybody. Thank you, everybody. You gotta keep the fate, okay? This is all we can do. If we, if, if we put real people in charge, we can solve our problems. But if we stay in denial, we're gonna have a bigger problem. And I don't want the job, but I got it. And I, 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 got, I do what I do really good and tell the story properly. And so as insignificant as I might be, I'll continue to play the best role I can. And I'm gonna go out now for seven months, in less than 11 days. Uh, I'm asking people to start supporting me. Show me the, the ability. Give me the ability to go with everything possible to make this successful. Give me that latitude if you can, if you're in a position to do it. And if not, you didn't who. Tell them if you know who, to, who should do it. Get in their faces. Tell them to support me if that's what it takes. And... I do it with a heavy heart, okay? I worked all weekend. I don't get no break. I'll get on the boat and I'll head north and I won't get no break. I'll get up every day. I'll work hard all day. I won't get no break. I'll come back. I'll upload pictures for months and months and months. I won't get no break. And that connection is the only connection I got with the world. And I have to sit there all day and just upload pictures. Because if I do anything else, I have to re-upload the pictures and break because it breaks the connection. My commitment is absolute. And I, I, I apologize for not being able to absorb these incredible expenses. And I ask you to help take the stress off of me by donating as soon as possible to give me the confidence and to give me the equipment and the extra comforts that I should be afforded on this incredible, unbelievable task that has been set on our table and that we're not going to shy away from. We're, we're not going to pretend that is not our duty, you know? It's our watch and we're going to do it. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow night, 6 p.m. We'll get a few more shows in. Take care, folks. Desolation comes upon the sky. Do I see?